Hi everyone, my name is Rajashekar. Welcome to my channel. This video is about using Camps' timeline method to match DMX lights to the music. Earlier, we saw this method by recording light cues to individual playbacks and then recording them one by one to Unreal Engine using Take Recorder. Then we used Level Sequencer to match recorded keys to music, which was a long and painful process. There was also a possibility of making mistake with keys. Now Camps' timeline method will be more effective where we will program lights and match them to music to a single playback. We will use Unreal Engine to record that playback using Take Recorder. This time it's ready to output after adding camera angles as required. The Camps' timeline method has its own pros and cons. We will explore them in this video. To start with, you can use my previous map along with Camps' show file or choose your own map. The link for how to use my previous map is in description. If you are using your own map, make sure DMX library is patched and connected to lights in Unreal Engine and Camps. Light groups are created in Camps and finally you have some cues recorded. You can notice I have my previous map in Unreal Engine and Camps file loaded and I am testing my playbacks to show lights which I have already recorded. I have two pages of playbacks recorded. I am making a small change here by deleting few playbacks which aren't required. And I am also moving the first element of the playback to the empty space. Trying to keep the first playback of every page empty. Pick a music of your choice, let it be shorter to start with. Make sure it's converted to either WAV or MP3 format and placed in Documents, Magic Queue, Show and Audio Folder. Here's the music we are going to use for the demo. Clear the screen and click on Rec which is the record button to the first empty slot and playback. Let's rename it using set command and call it music. Double click on the S button and change wait to time code and set this to queue timing. Triple click on the S button and go to audio DJ tab and double tap on the audio file and choose the audio file we placed in magic use audio folder in documents. Click setup button then ports. Change the audio output device to computer's preferred audio speaker system. Change the audio input device to internal speaker. Let's check the audio by playing the music fader and it seems to be working fine. To see the audio timeline, click on timeline button to the right. Use the dial on the right to zoom in and zoom out. Left click hold on the mouse to pan. To play the audio, you need to turn on the fader on music playback. Point remember, you'll be able to move across timeline and scroll only when the fader is on on the music playback. Otherwise, it's locked. The music playback button is a primary playback to which we have added music and we are going to record all the lights to it and match it using timeline. So always make sure this is active. We can either record the light cues on a particular point or record anywhere on the timeline and move it to the desired point. Now we are going to play and record some sharpies from rear to front one by one. We will try to match them to the music beats. Let's get inside timeline by clicking on music playback button, view TC, then view timeline. You also need to make sure all the playbacks are renamed properly as per lights, which will help you to identify them in the timeline. Let's record by clicking on add TC track. It's on recording mode now. Let's turn on sharpie rear fader and then turn it down after a while. Click on recording to stop recording. This is the process of recording. You can notice two keys are recorded. The one on the left is 100% and the right is 0%. So a light starts from 100 then dims off to 0. Let's move this to desired spot in the timeline. You can move this by holding shift and selecting the keys then drag it to the desired spot. You can duplicate a key set by selecting them by holding shift and then click copy. Then click on the spot where you want it to be copied. Let's remove them now one by one by using a rem button. Click on rem and then the key to remove. You will be able to delete only one key at a time. Let's match the lights to the timeline and test it. Let's proceed to record next sharpie set by following the same method as above.
By scrolling, you might not be able to catch the beat always. Best is to play and play the fader again and again to decide where you need the lights to start or end. You will see me doing that. We also have markers. I'll cover markers and additional aspects of timeline in another tutorial. Now both the sharpies looks good. Let's proceed to add the third set of keys. You will notice insert to track word instead of add TC. Clicking on this will also start recording and you can stop once you're done. For this demo, I'm recording one by one. You can also record all the light playbacks in one go and then move the keys to the desired spot. Every key set is recorded separately. I'm making a mistake by accidentally moving key of previous Sharpie. Correcting the mistake now. It's slightly off, correcting the keys again. Let's add a pyro for the end drag music. This is what happens when you forget to stop the record, then you move to the next page and don't return to the page where your master music playback is. You can also notice something's not right. The music abruptly stops. It's because when I moved a blank fader in the second page, it got recorded as well. Let's get rid of the empty key which is stopping the sequence abruptly. Now I'm going to record a LED chase and strobe for the end beats. You can always use start, stop and restart the timeline as required. But the music and lights will be reset only by music playbacks fader. I'm trying to match these final two sets of keys recorded. You can also see me using the red marker as guide for positioning start and end of keys. Turning down the fader isn't turning off the pyro because the sequence is interrupted. You will have to clear this by clicking on shift and then the release button REL. When you press shift plus release, the lights doesn't trigger for the first time, but it plays the second time. Now let's play the playback twice for the pyro to work properly. Best practice would be to use shift and then release only when a light doesn't turn off by faders. The keys are matched the music. Let's save the progress and proceed to Unreal Engine. In Unreal Engine, go to Windows Cinematics Take Recorder. In Take Recorder window, click on Plus Source DMX Library, then click on Null DMX Library. And then choose your DMX Library from the drop down menu. Click on Add All Fixture Patches. Click on Record button to start recording. Give it few seconds and then play the music fader in Camsys. Once it's done, turn down the fader and stop the take recorder. Close off the chances program right away. 
import the wave format of audio inside unreal engine the take recorder sequence is available in content browser cinematics takes get inside the correct date of the record open the recorded sequence we have the recorded keys from camsys let's set the range by adjusting green and the red slider Let's import audio file into sequencer by clicking on plus track then click on audio track click plus audio and choose the audio file match the sequence to the audio Let's preview Let's adjust end slider and preview again Let's add a camera animation to the scene. I'm going to do a dolly out shot to reveal the entire scene as the lights come up. Let's do that. It's done and this is how it looks. Let's save and render the sequence as image sequences. The image sequence is rendered. Let's see the final output. Now that's the workflow of using Camsys timeline method. Hope you found this video informative. See you all soon on another video. Do subscribe and share the channel to anyone who would be interested to learn concepts of virtual DMX lights and techniques. I am Raj Shekhar signing out. See you.